as a city struggling to respond, to grieve, to react, to move forward following the killing of Breonna Taylor, other deaths that followed, a year of protests, an enormous spike in gun violence across the city and the country. This exhibit from the beginning has represented our attempt, like what would it look like for a museum to try to serve a city going through what Louisville's been going through to try to serve our country at a time of need. When you walk into the museum, into the galleries, on your sightline, you see the portrait of Brianna Taylor painted by Amy Sherald. It's the only thing you see. If you've come to the museum to just see that painting, you know exactly where to find it. If you want to engage with the exhibition as a concept, you can also do that. So the intention with this placement was to make the portrait accessible, to make people feel comfortable to know where they were intending to go, to also understand the importance of this exhibition in relationship to the story of Breonna Taylor. The title Promise, Witness, Remembrance was developed from a conversation I had with Tamika Palmer when I asked her what this exhibition could do for her and represent for her daughter's legacy. It was also important to understand that this exhibition was meant to connect the local to the national. So when I first started on this journey, I knew where the painting was going to end up. I knew that it was going to be co-acquired by the Smithsonian and by the Speed Museum. And so I, I looked pointedly to how I could start that conversation between the local and national throughout the exhibition, thinking about promise, you know, so the sections, the artworks, artists. Oh, say can you see by freedom's clear light. The first section is promise, which is the promise of a nation and the symbols that the promise is meant to afford its citizens. Key things like national anthems, flags, voting rights, and the military that uphold them are what artists and artworks in this section look at. Hank Willis Thomas has the two works, the flags that are flanking the doors, and each star represents a person killed by gun violence in the United States in the year that they represent. That dying. The next section, Witness, thinks not only about the curatorial framework, but also about visitors to the museum. I anticipate many will be first-time visitors. So this, this portion of the exhibition really unpacks what artists do. Artists help us understand the contemporary moment. And in this section, I've paired historical works with more contemporary ones to tell a larger story about witnessing and sometimes protesting. The muffled drums is one of the first protests or marches for black lives in the United States. And it was organized by the NAACP. And then the protest photographs of Louisville, focusing on historic contemporary, you know, timely but enduring. Remembrance is a section that looks at artworks that have been created to honor those lost to gun violence and or police brutality and their legacies. The exhibition was developed in conversation with many key constituents. I initially developed a national panel of advisors to guide the conversation from the onset. These people come from very different walks of life, They've all experienced gun violence and or police brutality, either in their families or communities, or stand in solidarity. I spent a lot of time listening to the Louisville Steering Committee and also the team at the Speed Museum. And from these conversations, alongside listening to Tamika Palmer, is how the curatorial framework developed. I'm hoping that this type of work, this type of co-creation, where we've worked with community. Community has had a voice, not just a superficial voice, but a really in-depth autonomy as of the outcome that happens. I'm hoping that that becomes a new model, that institutions learn from us, that this can happen. You can work with community and make programming and exhibitions together. So at The Speed, our mission is to invite everyone to celebrate art forever. So consistent with that, and also because of the nature of this exhibit, Everything about it is free. Um, admission, parking, 
we want this to be extremely accessible for a lot of reasons. One, no one should be making money off of this experience, and we aren't. But even more so, we want everyone to come through this exhibit together. Every visitor is going to be different. I'm going to have a different experience because I'm a black woman. Um, I'm at the heart of things that are happening here, so I experience it as first person. But if you have not been at the heart of what has happened here, taking that in and really understanding someone else's truth, right, through their voice, through their eyes is important, but also really reflecting on your place in that, right? Have you been supportive of this movement? Has it been a little um, intimidating or frightening at some points? And really examining kind of uh, how we can move forward together.